Einstein's papers in the early 20th century were quite short. They were at most three pages long, and he didn't need a, a very expensive lab or a lot of equipment. He did it all by himself as a thought experiment. And these thought experiments completely changed the world. And I'd like to challenge our students to conduct similar thought experiments in their time here. This is, is truly the culmination of the curriculum of every level of the school. The entire program, in a sense, is designed to function like a thesis project. It's to extend the period of time in which a student can mull over a particular idea and develop their identity in the field. They're told about thesis from the very beginning, and the idea that they would be able to develop a significant piece of work that contributed to the discipline at the end of their studies is a very interesting goal for them. I think it's the measure of the maturity of a school, because it's the moment where students start working alone. They come back to us after they've been engaging with the faculties for two, three, five years, and they have for the first time to take all in and decide what they give back to the society, what they give back to the school. Thesis, whether undergrad or grad, is essentially a public event. This is not typical in other schools. For students, this is important because it, it shows them that we value their ideas and expect them to engage the outside world. We invite every year hundreds of jurors that come from everywhere in the world to see the work of the students. And they come because they know that Sarthes is a hotbed of innovation, new technologies, new talent, and they understand that being here, they're part of a discussion of what architecture will be in the future. And many students, when you talk to them, they come to SIRE because it has thesis. What I really think is so special about this program in particular is that it takes people from different backgrounds, majors, and careers. Thesis at SIRE is super special because anything goes. The interesting thing about SciArc kind of comes to the process of thesis, and perhaps even the process of being at SciArc, is that you're not necessarily coming into the school with nothing. I have this idea, it's kind of loose. I don't know where I'm going with it. You meet people who studied neuroscience in the past. You meet people who studied psychology. I personally came from an art history background. Your life the culture you're from, everything you've gone through in your life is coming with you to SciArc. People make films, people build sets, you know, I think it it's really just sort of open to, to you as a student. Whatever it is you're really interested in or passionate in, there's, there's space for you to sort of bring that into the conversation. That just kind of sets up a very interesting set of projects that come out of different studios. You spend the summer in the thesis pit with your classmates, duking it out with yourself, your 3D models. We're always like learning from each other. And the idea that this school only emphasizes that and helps you further those ideas that you already had that summer semester for me was really kind of like the crux of everything I'd been working on in SciArc without even realizing it. That was a sort of role that SciArc played for me and for a lot of people. So my thesis is called Atypical. My thesis at SciArc was called Zealots of Compton. My thesis was called Shaping Face. Basically what I'm looking at is the post-war Californian single-family home, the performance of fitting in that a lot of these architectural elements embody, and just trying to like deconstruct them and suggest a new way of like designing these homes that support nuance and difference. The thesis was about the sort of bounding boxes and series of restrictions that create the bounding box that exists in 
our everyday environment and to be more specific, the neighborhood. I was interested in how these bounding boxes develop and grow over time and how these constraints set by uh, city codes or guidelines or other ambiguous sort of rules change or adapt over time. My thesis, as far as I understand, was the first thesis at SciArc performed exclusively on the computer. In a nutshell, looking at the relationship between architecture and the emerging electronic information technologies. It was a project sort of focused on reinterpreting or sort of redirecting the conversation about cosmetics as they relate to architecture. Moving away from a sort of gendered perspective, you know, really looking at makeup as a tool for self-expression, self-creation. I made silicone houses for my thesis. I had photos, you know, there weren't necessarily architectural drawings, but it was about architecture and about space and community. My thesis project is in the collection at the Museum of Modern Art. That work in the Museum of Modern Art is the product of my studies at SciArc. A thesis that had my voice in a way, but wasn't trying too hard to to say that was me, but it was just me because I was just bringing in everything I already either knew or lived through. My thesis formed the basis of a lot of research work that I've done in practice and the basis for much of my teaching. Not only was my thesis sort of talking about this specific thing, but I actually could grow this thesis further. And when you have that realization, is when your practice starts to actually start. It's the first project they do as professional, I think, and it's the last project they do as students. So this is what is nice is that it can evolve. It doesn't have to have one format. It could be every three years, it could be completely different. And when you look back at the 50 years, you see how in incredible it has been, the many voices of thesis.